Hey everybody, Rich here from HFX Gaming Memories, and I know I've been away, but I've been really busy, and it's time to get back to doing this channel. So, it's the holiday season, so we're going to be doing a chocolate raspberry cocktail. Sorry, I'm more of a yeller, not a singer, and we're going to be pairing it with a great video game, as always. So let's get started. First, we're going to take our shaker cup, we're going to fill it with ice, and from the freezer, we're going to take a chilled martini glass. Now, if you like, you can put some sugar around the rim just to make it a little bit more festive. From here, we're gonna take our jigger and we're gonna add half an ounce coffee liqueur. There goes Rob's festive antlers. I know you didn't wanna wear them, but you could just play along. He gets stubborn this time of the year. We'll put that in there. Next, we're gonna go with one full ounce creme de cacao because you can't have a chocolate raspberry martini without chocolate. Now, I tried this the other night, and I must say, I absolutely love this cocktail. It tastes like something from a really fancy restaurant, like a nice treat. I actually had the aftertaste flavor for almost an hour, so I really, really, really was impressed with the flavor of this one. Next, I'm ouncing one ounce of raspberry vodka. And finally, one ounce heavy cream. I've got that all in there with our ice. As always, I'm going to shake that for about 30 seconds. That should do. I've always been a big fan of the chocolate and the more dessert style martinis, if you haven't noticed. And we're just going to strain that into our glass. That looks delicious already. Now, from here, you have some options. If you have some dark chocolate lying around the house, you can shave and put that on the top of the drink just for a little bit of extra added seasonal flavor. Me, I'm just going to decorate it with some raspberries. So you see, I've put three of them here and just lay it along the top. And there you have your chocolate raspberry martini. It's just that simple. Your guests are going to love it. Now let's talk game pairing. Well, there's not really a lot of holiday retro classic games. In fact, when I was a kid, the only thing we used to do was mix the Doom Christmas wad, which is the levels, with the Total Conversion Cowboy one. I don't know why we mixed those two together, but that was our holiday game. I got thinking that a lot of people are doing baking, so let's look at baking games. And for Nintendo, we're going to be looking at Yoshi's Cookie. Now, I personally have never been a big fan of slide puzzles. Uh, the little handheld plastic ones, I'm terrible at. I'm more into crosswords, logical puzzles, that sort of thing. So I never really got into Yoshi's Cookie, Tetris. I did have Dr. Mario, but that was a gift by mistake. I was told that Dr. Mario was actually a game where you're running inside the human body, like a side-scroller Mario fighting viruses. Uh, you can imagine my disappointment when I got a puzzle game, especially considering I had a black and white TV. So I haven't played much Yoshi's Cookie, so I'm looking forward to trying it again. Maybe my opinion will change on that type of game. So I'm going to clean up and let's get started. Our cocktail is done. We've got our controllers. Let's play some Yoshi's Cookie. You may have noticed that the title screen it says License from Bulletproof Software. Well, how can a Yoshi or Mario game be licensed by anybody other than Nintendo? Well, it turns out there was a company called Home Data that was developing an arcade game called Hermetica. What? Test audiences really didn't care for this, so they sold the rights to Bulletproof Software. Bulletproof Software then started developing the 16-bit version of this game, while Nintendo was licensed the 8-bit version of it and decided to develop Yoshi's Cookie. So, Bulletproof Software essentially licensed the game to Nintendo, and Nintendo licensed the characters back to Bulletproof Software. That's why we have Yoshi Cookie on both the Nintendo and Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So, let's take a look at the game. Now, as you can see, like most puzzle games, you have an option on where you want to start. So, Yoshi's Cookie has rounds 1 through 10, and each round actually has 10 stages. You can choose your speed, low and medium or high. I'm just going to go with medium for this. And you have three types of music to choose from, whatever your style is. All right, some of this is starting to come back to me. I think I can move individual cookies. Nope. Um, looks like the A button is how I actually move the rows. That's right. You move entire rows of cookies and try to line up cookies of similar style. So we have the square cookies, the diamond shaped cookies, and the circular cookies that look more like donuts. The goal is to get a row of two or more cookies. Obviously, the more cookies in the row, the more points you get. Uh, you can see that I'm getting multipliers here by accident because I'm trying to think a few moves in advance. But... Really, I'm just getting lucky. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see that when I actually get cookies taken off of the screen, it fills up a meter. If you actually get 15 of these filled up, you get a Yoshi cookie, which is sort of a free cookie. It means that it can serve as any type of cookie. 
So, so far, I must say, I'm really enjoying this game. It's pretty simplistic, but I am in the earlier levels. I'm sure the higher it goes, the harder it gets. So, really, Yoshi's Cookie isn't overly complicated, but the good thing is, there's a versus mode. Are you ready? Let's take a look. For the versus mode, everybody can actually individualize their setup. So, depending on how you want to play, you can go low, medium, or high speed. There's actually a handicapping that makes it harder or easier depending on your player's style. Some of us may need an advantage when playing. Now, for versus mode, it's actually a point scale, so that's what the handicapping is for. We're trying to get 25 points before your opponent does. So as you can see, I've actually started off with a little bit of handicap against Rob because he's pretty good. Or so he says. If you look under your time limit, you're going to see an effect. What this means is if you use a Yoshi cookie, there'll be a specific effect on the board. And not necessarily to your opponent. It can be self-serving. So... If it says blinding use a Yoshi cookie, you're actually going to be temporarily unable to see the middle nine tiles of your board. If you use the code during panic, you're going to see that the board is randomized and you can't take action while the board is actually being randomized. Slave, the player loses temporary control of their board that is being controlled by the other player who triggers it. Nothing happens if the slave targets themselves. You'll also see that there's some point changes from negative three plus three to negative seven. So what this means is, in addition to the cookies, you have to be strategic on how to take advantage of your player. Even with the point advantage, you still couldn't move a single cookie? You're really bad at this. For the Super Nintendo version, it plays very similar, just better graphics. You can see that there's a significant influence from the Super Mario World game here. Instead of just Mario in a Baker outfit doing all the controls himself, it's him and Yoshi working together to move the cookies along. What's really exciting is this puzzle mode. Now. I don't know much about Tetris, but I am familiar with Alexei Pezhenov, and he was actually the designer of this puzzle section. I found this a little bit more enjoyable because, again, it's thinking um, in advance. It's more logical style puzzles that I'm used to. So you see that there's a number above Mario's head. This means you have one move in this example to remove all the cookies. So as the levels increase, the more moves you actually have. It's definitely a brain teaser, and just take a look at this last level. I'd probably have to sit here all day trying to figure out exactly how to defeat this in the specific amount of moves. Thanks again for joining us at HFX Gaming Memories, Cocktails and Game Pairing. I really enjoyed making this cocktail and trying something different with the video. It was a lot of fun to be back at this. Here's a delicious Italian eggnog martini. One of my favorites. So what do you think? What could we pair this with? I want to hear your ideas and maybe we'll find a game and I'll show you how to make this delicious drink. You can follow us on Twitter at HFX Gaming Memory. You can put some ideas in the comments. I'm going to read them and reply to all of them. And you can even email me at hfxgamingmemories at gmail.com. Until next time, drink and game responsibly. We'll see you soon.